to my channel, Michelle Gay Science Teacher. Today, we're going to do another experiment with Need Foundation, National Ener Energy Education Development. In today's video, we're going to continue to work with Station 3. In Station 3, we're talking about endothermic and exothermic process. Remember, endothermic is energy going in, heat going in, and exothermic is heat going out. So when you think of heat going in and you touch something, that means that the feel of it is going to be cooler. If you think of exothermic heat going out, then you will feel the warmth from that energy. We call heat energy thermal energy. All right, so today we're going to be doing our experiment on hand warmers. In station one, part one, we tested out what would happen when you use baking soda and vinegar. Would that be an endothermic or exothermic process? In part two of station two, we experimented with calcium chloride and water to determine if we had an endothermic or exothermic process. In today's video, we're going to be looking at iron iodes. The materials you will need for this experiment is a plastic bag, hand warmers, a thermometer, something to write with, scissors, a bag with old iron oxide pieces, and something to record on. Let's begin this experiment with a hypothesis. Remember, a hypothesis is an educated guess, unlike a prediction. With an educated guess, uh, a hypothesis, you can change your guess later on as you're doing the experiment, or you will begin to think about how your answer can change, or if your answer is correct during the experiment. Let's think about this. How will the temperature change with the iron oxide or the iron filing pieces in the hand warmer when exposed to oxygen? Also, do you think this will be an endothermic or an exothermic process? Let's begin. Step one. Remove the hand warmer from the plastic wrap. Then cut open the cloth hand warmer packet and pour the contents of the hand warmer into an empty plastic bag. This will be called the new packet. Next, have students record their observations. Let them look at it, let them feel it, and uh, write down their observations just from looking and touching. Next, you will have your students take the temperature of the filings. The temperature is 80 degrees. All right, so we're going to record 80 degrees as our start temperature. Now, we're going to leave the bag open with the thermometer in here for three minutes. I'm going to use a timer on my Fitbit, and I will be back in approximately three minutes. I want you to get your timer out if you have these materials and start your time. Okay, so three minutes have passed, and we're going to look at the temperature and record it. It now records 91 degrees, so we're going to put 91 degrees after three minutes. And if you notice or have the students feel, the bag is much warmer to the touch. Still thinking about endothermic, exothermic process. Our next part, we're going to this time seal the bag. And we're going to put our timer again for three minutes. One of the things I forgot to tell you is that you needed a timer with materials. So, um, just remember that when you're starting this. All right, 
So let's get our timer going and we'll be back in three minutes. Okay, so we're going to leave the zip lock bag zip with the thermometer in it and record our temperature after three minutes. It decreased to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to record Now, teachers, at this step, you can ask your students, why do you think the temperature decreased instead of increasing? If you have them in groups, you can have them um, discuss this in their group or talk with a partner and discuss why do they think the temperature decreased. In the next part, we're going to look at the old iron fillings. Okay, so that was the bag that we had prepared already. Have your students observe by touching, also by looking at the colors. And then you may want them to have them compare the two bags together so that they can see that there is a color change. Let's see if I can show you that better. There we go. So that they can see there's a color change. Now, if you've been over uh, chemical reactions, um, students know that with a chemical reaction, the, the substance change to a new substance, um, and it can change, by, you can have a, see a change with odor, you can see a change with color also. All right, so let's get started by taking the temperature of the old iron oxide filling. Okay, so these iron fillings are about 62 degrees, 62 degrees. Have your students record this information, make sure they absorb uh, how it feels, um, if it's warm, if it's cool, have them record the color also at this time. I'm going to do that real quick. Now, you can begin to ask your students, what was the difference between the new iron fillings compare to the old iron fillings and have them discuss in their group or turn and talk with a partner. Now that students have completed part one and part two of this experiment, part three is the conclusion where students can discuss and answer questions related to this experiment. Some of the questions, what happens to iron when exposed to oxygen? Is this a chemical or physical change? And why? Is this a um, exothermic or an endothermic process? How do you know? Explain your answer. So these are a few of the questions that they can discuss to come up with their conclusion. Then have them go back and look at their hypothesis and write if their hypothesis is correct or not based on the information that they collected. Now, the next part is for students to understand the transformation from one energy to the other. The last part is to have students determine which energy uh, forms were used and which energies were transformed. In this video and in this experiment, uh, chemical energy was transformed to thermal energy because we had a chemical reaction when the iron pieces um, were set out for a long time and no longer exposed to oxygen, they began to break down and change color and they no longer were hot. So we have a chemical reaction. All right, and so it transferred to thermal because we have that uh, exothermic process that occurred because of the heat 
that occurred in the uh, chemical reaction with the uh, iron filing pieces. Thank you for spending time with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and gleaned enough information that you can go back in your classroom, teachers, and do this with your students. If you like this video, please click the subscribe button and like. I hope you have a wonderful, blessed day, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Remember, science can be fun and engaging. All we have to do is go through the process with our students.